Hello everyone, welcome back to Behind the Pages with Maggie, breaking barriers one story at a time. Welcome to episode 25, and I bring to you a very, very interesting story on the Japanese culture, Suki's Kimono, written by Chiri Uegaki and illustrated by Stefan Jorich. Now, I think before we begin, um, reading a little bit about the context will really help us understand the story in overall after we finish reading it. So I think let's start with the context. Now, Suki's favorite possession is a blue cotton kimono. A gift from her obata, it holds special memories of her grandmother's visit last summer. And Suki is going to wear it on her first day back to school, no matter what anyone says. When it's Suki's turn to share with her classmates what she did during the summer, she tells them about the street festival she attended with her obata and the circle dance that they took part in. In fact, she gets so carried away reminiscing that she's soon humming the music and dancing away, much to the delight of her entire class. Filled with gentle enthusiasm and a touch of whimsy, Suki's kimono is the joyful story of a little girl whose spirit leads her to march and dance to her own drum beat. Now, without further ado, let's get into the story. On the first day of school, Suki wanted to wear her kimono. Her sisters did not approve. You can't wear that, said Mari. People will think you're weird. You can't wear that, said Yumi. Everyone will laugh and no one will play with you. You need something new, Suki. You need something cool. Abusuki shook her head. She didn't care for new. She didn't care for cool. She wanted to wear her favorite thing. And her favorite thing was her kimono. Suki's obachan had given her the kimono. The first time Suki wore it, her obachan took her to a street festival where they slurped balls of slippery cold soma noodles and shared a cone of crunchy shaved ice topped with a sweet red bean sauce. Under strings of paper lanterns, Suki joined her bacha in a circle dance. She followed her and copied her movements, trying to be as light and as graceful. She watched the other women and children who danced, especially those who were dressed in her cotton kimonos, just like her. Later, Suki sat so close to the stage that when the taiko drummers performed bom 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 bom, she felt like she'd swallowed a ball of thunder and her whole insides quaked and quivered. Before they left the festival, Suki and Obata stopped at the souvenir stand. There were many things to choose from, but Obata found the prettiest thing of all, a handkerchief of pale pink linen decorated with tiny maple leaves and cherry blossoms. When she gave it to Suki, she said, This will help you remember our day. Now it was time for school. Mother checked Suki's wobi one last time and took a picture of Mari, Yumi and Suki together by the front steps. Then, as she watched, the three sisters made their way down the block to their school. Mari and Yumi stayed several places ahead of Suki and pretended they didn't know her. But Suki didn't mind. She turned and waved to her mother before she click-clopped alone in her shiny red getter, feeling very pleased in her fan-patterned blue kimono. Once in a while, Suki would lift her arms and let the butterfly sleeves flutter in the breeze. It made her feel like she'd grown her own set of wings. When she reached the school, 
Mari and Yumi hurried across the yard to a group of their friends. Suki stopped and looked around. Some of the children turned and stared at her, and others giggled and pointed at her kimono. But Suki ignored them. She took a seat in a swing to wait for the bell. A girl dressed in overalls just like a pair Suki had at home sat on the swing beside her. Hi, Suki, said the girl. Hi, Penny, said Suki. How come you're dressed so funny? Penny asked. Where did you get those shoes? Suki lifted her feet off the sand and wiggled her toes. I'm not dressed funny, she said. My grandma gave me these shoes. Suki started pumping her legs. After a moment, Penny did the same. And soon they were both swinging as fast and as high as they could. Swoosh, swoosh, up and up. When the bell rang, Suki and Penny jumped off their swings and ran to the gym for the first day assembly. Once they are finally taken to their new classroom, Suki chose a desk near the window, and Penny chose a desk next to Suki. As they waited for everyone to find a seat, two boys in front of Suki turned and snickered behind their hands. One of the boys reached over and snatched at Suki's sleeve. "Look at this," he said. "She's a bat." Suki felt her cheeks burn, but she did not respond. Instead, she concentrated on sitting up straight and tall, the way her obachan always did. It was easy to do with an obi around, wrapped snug around her middle. Her obi was golden yellow. And in its folds, Suki had tucked away her pale pink handkerchief. "Welcome to the first grade," said the teacher. "My name is Mrs. Pagiere," she smiled. "Let's introduce ourselves and tell everyone what we did this summer." When it was her turn to speak, Suki stood up and told the teacher her name. "Well, hello, Suki," said Mrs. Pagiere. "What did you do this summer?" My grandma visited us," she said, straightening her sleeves. "She brought me my kimono and my getter." Suki raised her foot to show the teacher her wooden clog. Somewhere in the classroom, someone laughed, but Suki took a deep breath and continued. The best thing was that she took me to a festival. And there were dancing girls dressed like me, and they danced like this. She took a few steps and swayed her arms sideways. Look, now she's dancing! Someone said, but Suki didn't hear. She hummed the music she remembered hearing at the festival. She remembered how it felt to dance barefoot in the open air, on fresh cut grass that tickled her toes. She tried to picture the other dancers, how they moved forward in the circle with the rhythm of the music, how they stamped their feet first right, then left, swung their arms first up, then down, how they stepped back and back and back, then clapped. When Suki couldn't remember the next step, she made it up, just to keep dancing. One two, one two, one two, stop. When she finished, the room seemed very quiet. Everyone was watching her. Suki sat down, wondering if, if she was in trouble. But Mrs. Pagiel said, "That was wonderful, Suki," and she started to clap. Then, so did Penny, and after a moment, so did the entire class. After school, as the three sisters walked home together, 
Mari and Yumi grumbled about their first day. No one even noticed my new sweater, said Mari. No one even noticed my cool shoes, said Yumi. Basuki just smiled. As she clip clopped along behind them, Suki pulled out the pale pink handkerchief from her obi and held it up over her head to catch the wind. And in her blue cotton kimono and in her shiny red getter, Suki danced all the way home. Well, that is the end of the story. Thank you so much for joining me today、um, to listen in to episode 25 of Behind the Pages with Maggie, breaking barriers one story at a time. Now, I really think we can all learn from Suki、um, and apply it to our everyday life because, just like Suki, I think we should learn to be ourselves and to embrace ourselves and embrace whatever interests and passions that we have. Do not feel embarrassed by it. Love it because that's what makes you who you are. And just like Suki, she embraced her, her love of her blue kimono and she did not care about how others perceived her, how others looked at her. She just tried to be herself. And by being yourself, you're just being the best you can be. And that's what's the most infectious, I think. That's what's the most contagious. That's what moves people. And I think just by being yourself, That's the best thing you can do. And that's what everyone loves. Everyone loves when someone is genuine, when someone is true and sincere. And I think we can all learn from,、um, we can all learn from Suki and to just try and be ourselves. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I really hope you enjoyed the episode as much as I did reading it. So thank you so much. I will see you later in episode 26. Goodbye for now.